Hello and welcome. You're watching France 24's Tech Show. We have a very special edition today about one of the most pressing questions in human history. Are we alone in the universe? Coming up, artificial intelligence could be scientists' best shot at helping intercept signs of extraterrestrial intelligence. This as it sifts through tetrabytes of data collected by satellites. The director of the Breakthrough Listen Project at the prestigious SETI Institute in California is our guest. He tells us how his team has discovered 72 new fast radio bursts with AI. Plus, for all the UFO lovers out there, we'll take a look at apps that can teach you more about the universe and its mysteries, but also help you identify celestial bodies in the sky. The most famous method to estimate the odds of finding intelligent life in the universe is the so-called Drake Equation. It was written by American scientist Frank Drake in 1961, not so much to precisely nail down the number of alien civilizations, but more as a way to stimulate scientific dialogue at the SETI Institute's first meeting. Here's a closer look at the Drake Equation. Are we alone in the universe? And if not, what are the odds of finding intelligent life? It's a legitimate question considering the age of the universe and the mind-boggling number of planets that could possibly sustain life. In 1961, the founder of the SETI Institute, Frank Drake, tried to untangle that paradox by developing a probabilistic formula now known as the Drake Equation. And here's how it goes. The rate of star creation in our galaxy. The fraction of those stars that have planets orbiting them the number of exoplanets or planets that are capable of supporting life, the fraction of those planets that go on to develop intelligent life, the number of civilizations that can develop detectable communication, and how long that communication can be detected. The problem is that the estimated values for several of its factors remain highly speculative. That's because we don't yet understand the universe well enough. In 1961, Drake made the educated guess that there were 10 alien civilizations out there ready to make contact with us. To answer the question of whether or not we are alone in the universe, scientists have been scouring the night sky for potential signals from alien civilizations somewhere deep in the cosmos. And while they first focus on looking for intelligent life, now scientists are concentrating on intercepting signs of advanced technologies or so-called Techno signatures. Clément Bonneau takes a look at the history of SETI. Scientists have been searching for evidence of life on Mars since the 19th century. But what about intelligent beings elsewhere in the universe? That's what SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, is all about. The aim is not to detect intelligent life, but signs of it through the existence of intelligent technologies. The basic assumption is that aliens are out there and are trying to contact us. The key question is how. Scientists believe the search should be for electromagnetic signals, or radio waves, which can travel across the universe at the speed of light. The world's first SETI program was set up by Ohio State University in the US in 1971, using a radio telescope known as Big Ear. The program rose to fame in 1977, after astronomer Jerry Emmon noticed an unusually strong signal. On the printout it looked like a string of letters and numbers, but to Emmon it was an extraordinary discovery. Today it's known as the WOW signal, because that's what he wrote in the margin when he spotted it. Despite several attempts, it's never been detected again. However, it remains the strongest candidate for an alien radio transmission to this day. Many other SETI projects have been set up over the years, using increasingly refined telescopes and data processing systems. Because of limited time and funding, scientists have only been able to study a handful of frequencies from a few thousand star systems, out of billions and billions of stars in total. One of the problems is to make sense out of all the data collected by satellites and telescopes around the world. But artificial intelligence could perhaps be the key 
For the first time, the Breakthrough Listen project recently applied machine learning techniques to speedily pour through old radio signal data. And what came out of it was the discovery of 72 new fast radio bursts. Well, for more on this, I'm now joined by Dr. Andrew Simeon from the SETI. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, walk us through this latest experiment that you conducted. Right. So what we did is we developed a, a machine learning algorithm to investigate a, a data set that we had previously collected with the Green Bank Telescope uh, in West Virginia here in the United States. Um, and we designed that algorithm to be able to detect a, a, a new uh, radio transient source that we've just learned about uh, over the last 10 years or so called fast radio bursts. Um, and in this data set, we had previously detected 21 such bursts. Uh, and after applying the machine learning algorithm, we were able to detect uh, 72 additional bursts, uh, bringing the total number to, to just less than 100. Uh, and this represents the greatest number of bursts from this source ever seen in a single observation. So what exactly are fast radio bursts? Uh, are they signatures of extraterrestrial technology? So we don't know what fast radio bursts are. Uh, they're, they're a mystery, and that's one of the things that, that makes them so exciting. There are lots of ideas. Um, most of the ideas have to do with natural uh, explanations. Uh, and basically what we see from these sources is just a, a single burst uh, of radiation that lasts for a millisecond uh, or just a couple of, of milliseconds. Uh, and, and most of the ideas have to do with some kind of uh, massive object, uh, perhaps colliding with another massive object, uh, and, and resulting in a, a large astrophysical explosion uh, that releases a, a very bright burst of, of radiation. But one idea that we have not yet been able to completely rule out is that these bursts are somehow related to an extraterrestrial technology. Uh, and I, I emphasize that this is a, a very remote possibility. The natural explanations are, are more likely. But uh, ultimately, we don't yet know what these, what these sources are, so we want to keep our, our options open. And why is the use of AI so exciting for your field of study? Well, in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence in SETI, we're ultimately looking for anomalies. We're looking for something strange in our data, uh, a, a radio signal or an optical signal that we didn't expect. And machine learning and artificial intelligence, as we've learned from other fields, mm -hmm. uh, is very, very good at finding anomalies. Uh, and so what we would like to do is, is develop machine learning-based algorithms that uh, will make our, our searches sensitive to the signals that we can't predict, uh, the, the so-called unknown unknowns. Andrew Simeon, the director of the Breakthrough Listen Project, thank you for that. Well, it's now time to welcome our tech expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. It's great to have you, Dan. Uh, many of you out there probably don't know this, but NASA and ESA have so-called planetary protection officers to protect Earth from alien harm and from any contamination. It sounds like men in black, Dan. Well, that's one of the two objectives, but the primary objective is to avoid biological contamination of other worlds where there's a potential for life, both in the past or in the present. Now, this is done by applying extremely rigorous cleanliness procedures for the technical centers, for the launch sites from where these missions uh, are to be launched, and even for the spacecrafts. Now, some of the sites where uh, the space hardware is assembled are cleaner than the standard operate, operating theaters uh, in a hospital, so that's how clean they are. But despite all these precautions, there's always a chance that these microbes who are very tough, they survive, right. uh, survive these conditions as well, as we saw in 2007 and 2009, where scientists discovered a new uh, genus of bacterium uh, next to a rocket and even in the clean room of uh, the Kennedy Space Center. This was in 2007. And as you mentioned, the second objective is, of course, to avoid the contamination of our planet's biosphere from, um, from extraterrestrial life, if it exists. Dan, thank you for that. We're going to move on now to Test 24. And Dan here is going to help us spot aliens. It's not a joke. Such workshops to detect alien techno signatures have been given in the past by NASA and ESA. Dan, when we see uh, strange phenomenons in the sky, what should we do? Who well, should we contact? Well, if you're in France, you should contact GEPAN, which is a division of the French National Space Agency that specializes in uh, investigating unidentified aerospace phenomena, not 
unidentified flying objects. Not object. UFOs. Absolutely. <laughs> now, this particular division was established in 1977. So it's been 41 years uh, since they have been analyzing all these uh, inexplicable sightings. And they have had around 8,000 uh, such uh, sightings reported. And they found that a majority of them can be attributed or they are attributed to either astronomical or aerospace phenomena. So it could be a planet, it could be a satellite. And here now, we can see pictures that were sent in by people. Absolutely. And uh, it's, it's not just GAPAN officials alone. They collaborate with scientists, they collaborate with psychologists to determine or to get to the root of, uh, of, these, uh, of these phenomena. And they have a detailed questionnaire, so it includes a lot of questions about the timing, the site, about the state uh, in which that person was. And we can also verify some of these sightings with our smartphones, it can be very easy. Absolutely, there are many apps that you can use. For example, there's an app called Starwalk 2 that allows you to identify stars and planets. All you have to do is point to your smartphone in the direction of the a sky where you spot the phenomenon and perhaps this will answer your question and there are other apps like uh, satellite tracker so as you know there are many satellites uh, in the sky and one of the, I mean one of the reasons could be because of uh, satellite and this you can do by uh, using uh, an app like satellite tracker. Dan thank you so much for that that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24 but you can watch it again on our website france24.com.